Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. And as we sing the hymns today, we will sing the first and last verse of every hymn. And please mute yourself so we can hear the music, but do sing along at home. wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We give you thanks, O Lord of glory, for the example of the first martyr, Stephen, who looked up to heaven and prayed for his persecutors to your son, Jesus Christ, who stands at your right hand, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. A reading from Acts. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, this man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, are these things so? And Stephen replied, brothers and fathers, listen to me. You are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have become his betrayers and murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels, and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged, and ground their teeth at Stephen. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Oh, my God. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks a hit head of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together be acceptable in the sight of God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Did you know that dogs can tell time with their noses? It's true. <laughs> they can. According to one researcher, dogs can tell time with their noses. Now, I don't mean by that, and they don't mean by that, that the dog can sort of sniff and say, oh, yes, it's 412 right now. That's not what it means. But a dog, based on the smells in a room or a place or outdoors, can often tell what time it is. For example, each of us, at least from a dog's perspective, has a rather unique smell. Our noses are not quite so finely tuned. As scientists tell us, we have about 5 million smell receptors in our noses. By comparison, dogs have 200 million, quite a few more. So they're able to smell things that you and I can't. And they're able to smell the intensity of those things. So, if you've been in a room for a while, the intensity is probably quite high. But then when you leave, slowly that intensity begins to drop. And a dog, based on the intensity of the smell, can tell how long you've been away. It's also why dogs, for example, can catch the scent of something outside on the ground and know which way the animal or whatever it was went, because it's more intense in the direction of wherever it went. All of this is based on time. I found that amazing, and perhaps you do too. That dog that's now sleeping on my bed right at the moment has more skills than I do, <laughs> and it's impressive. You and I have to rely on other things to tell time, whether they're watches or clocks or sundials. And most recently, in fact, just a few days ago, something was launched into outer space that will help us understand time even better. Amidst all of the news stories that have been coming through on the news the last week or two with Omicron rising, a friend of mine calls it Omicron, um, as all of those things have grabbed our attention and caused us to live in anxiety and fear, scientists 
have launched into space the James Webb Telescope. Here's a picture of the mirror. Maybe you've seen this picture someplace. It's an amazing array of gold-coated mirrors that a telescope being launched into space will be able to see farther than we've ever seen before. Many of us will remember the Hubble telescope being launched many years ago and all the problems it had. A lot of us are praying and crossing our fingers that those problems will not happen with this one, in part because this will be launched far enough away from Earth that we won't be able to go fix it if something goes wrong. And that's on purpose. It's meant to be far enough away from Earth and shielded from the sun that it will be able to detect infrared light. Now, without getting into all the technical details and testing your memory from your high school science classes, infrared light has very long wavelengths and it's affected by heat. So in order to see them, they have to be away, the telescope has to be away from the heat of the sun and shielded. And that's one of the more interesting features of this telescope. Why am I telling you about this? Because this telescope will be so sensitive, it will be able to see infrared light coming from stars and galaxies and other things that were formed near the beginning of creation. How is that possible? Well, they've been going away from us all of this time, and yet sending light in our direction. And that's what this telescope will see. It'll be able to see, quite literally, back in time, to be able to see close to the beginning of creation. You can do this yourself in a smaller way. Just go out and look at the stars. All of those stars didn't start shining yesterday. They started shining millions of years ago. And in some cases, the light that reaches your eye, think about this for just a moment. The light that reaches your eye is thousands, in some cases, millions of years old. Light that was created at the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem is just now reaching our eyes. And light that was created at the dawn of creation will just now begin to reach this telescope, if all goes well. So add your prayers <laughs> that things will go well and the good work of the scientists will bear fruit. On this first Sunday after Christmas, we hear those amazing words from John's gospel. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So often in our celebrations of Christmas, we focus on the baby in Bethlehem and we forget that there was a story long before Bethlehem, a story that reaches back to the dawn of creation, that light that will be seen perhaps by this telescope. What you and I are invited to do in this season is to allow ourselves to think in very spacious ways about time about God's creation, time that is not limited to our understanding, but is in fact eternal. John's Gospel is the one place that we can look for much of the New Testament teaching about eternal life. And for many of us, when we hear those phrases, that phrase eternal life, we think, oh, that means we get to live forever. Well, it also means that time goes another direction, back. And in fact, some theologians would suggest the time doesn't just have two dimensions, but three or even more. That's the kind of great mystery of God's creation that you and I are invited to behold as we celebrate Christmas tide. In John's Gospel, particularly, it says that eternal life is to know God. It's as if there's another dimension to life, a depth, not just a length like the light that comes to our eyes, it gives us a sense of the big picture of all of creation. And as you and I continue our celebration, remember Christmas goes 12 days, this is only day number two, we are invited to live in that light, in that life that is eternal, that goes far beyond our ability to understand or comprehend. 
and to be grateful for all of God's gifts to us. So next time you see your dog or look up into the sky, think about what time it might be and how eternal life comes to us by way of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed on page four of your service leaflet. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the, Holy, from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end we believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son with the father and the son he is worshiped and glorified he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People. Let us pray to our incarnate Lord, who has brought us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Christ born for us, son of God given for us, help us to know you, to worship and to serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wonderful counselor, you order all things with your wisdom. Help the church to reveal the mystery of your love and fill her with the spirit of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, the government is on your shoulders. Guide the leaders of the nations and bring in your kingdom of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you call us to live together in unity. Protect by your mercy all your children. Bless our families especially our parish family members, Rebecca and Jackson Shepherd, Allison Senior Brown and the Reverend Tom Brown, Zachary and Nathan, Carol Simone, Dorothy and Bill Smullen, M Gary and Maria Stapperfenny, Mark, Dan and Amelia, Tom and Diane Straka, and renew our communities, especially All Saints Church and the places where we all live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prince of peace, you bring reconciliation through the cross. By your healing power, give to all who suffer your gift of wholeness and peace. Those in our prayer parish prayer list especially, Barbara Erday, Susie Harris and the Harris and Bracken family, Patty Harris, Jean Kymack, Betty Conrad, Susan Levon, Jean Betty McGee, Roy, Gerard Walsh, Bill Ward, Liana Wellerding, Jim Young, and are there others? David Carter. I would also pray for 
Amy Gear and Molly Donovan, who both have COVID. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the Father, full of the Spirit, hear our prayer, receive our praises, fill our lives. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness and the power of by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life amen please unmute the peace of the lord be always with you and also, and also with, you. With, you. with you peace be, be with, with you, you everybody peace, peace. Be, with you. peace be with you peace peace and as we proceed, we are going to have um, just a few concluding prayers. We're remembering particularly this day, all of those who, as in the bidding Christmas bidding prayer, it says, celebrate Christmas with us, but in another light and on another shore, all those who have died and gone before us in the faith and particularly this day we are remembering all of all of our own loved ones and the right reverend desmond tutu who died early this morning in south africa let us pray almighty god our heavenly father we ask that you would remember your servants according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people and grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of thee, they may go from strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we pray for all of the children in our lives, those, our own children, the children we know and love, those children who are committed to our care and our prayers in whatever way. And today we particularly remember that yesterday was Carter Ragel's birthday. Let us pray. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just and true and good following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And finally, O Lord Jesus Christ, as you humbled yourself to be born among us and laid in a manger, bring us with the shepherds and wise men to kneel in awe and joyful thanksgiving and to follow the steps of your blessed life that rejoicing now in your peace, we may come at last to eternal glory in your presence, where the angels ever sing your praises. Amen. And now may Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, 
scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. into the world rejoicing in the birth of Christ our Savior. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.